He wanted me to play the saxophone, so I played the saxophone for a couple of years, and that was his way of always trying to, to push me and, and push me to new limits. Did I read this correctly, that you were popular in high school because of bubblegum? <laughs> well, you really got, you guys really did, uh, did some deep research, but I was always hungry, and uh, so I either had a little gum, which of, of course is not allowed in school, but I always kind of like had a half, just a little piece, something just to nibble on. And so uh, some of my friends would always come and like, hey, do you have something? And I'm like, here's a little piece of gum. But yeah, that's, uh, I forgot I said that. That's, that's, that's good research. How did the uh, hairstyle change after Boris Becker won Wimbledon? You know, hairstyles, I tried, I tried way too many things uh, in, in my career, in my life, but um, that was cool. I was a huge tennis fan, and I remember going to the hairdresser, and I was like, uh, I, want, I want my hair cut like Boris, and she's like, what? So she didn't make it red, but she made it sort of spiky, I guess. And Boris was one of my first, uh, you know, idols that I loved watching. He was such a warrior. He won Wimbledon when he was 17. Um, just a, a great, great player. Why do you consider basketball a girly sport? I think that was early when, uh, when I played handball and tennis. And handball, you know, I don't know, handball is not really big in the U.S., but it's really big in Europe. You can push somebody, you can hold him, you can even shove him to the ground at times and only get like a little bit of a penalty. And so to me, that was, uh, that was a tough sport. And my mom and my sister both played basketball. So to me, that was like, you know, you can't touch anybody. And, you know, if you bump somebody too hard, it's two shots. And so uh, to me, growing up, there were just uh, us boys, we play, we play handball. When I was about 10, 11, they were like, hey, you're so tall, you just come to one practice. And so I joined the school team, we're doing well right away. And, and then I really started really loving the, the, the sport. And then, and then I joined the, the, the club with my cousin, who was a year older than me. He kind of took me, he's like, just see one practice to see if you like it. And that was it. Really? I loved it, loved it from day one. Uh, start and never, never stopped again. And, and explain the the school gym, by by the way. I, I mean, the the court, nothing like this. Yeah, it's probably half, and half the size. Basketball wasn't a big sport uh, in Germany at all at the time, so there were really no nice school gyms. If you want to play basketball or, or really any sport in, in Europe, you usually join a club. The club have the nice facilities, the nice gyms. So the school gyms are usually super small. And it was like, it was this wooden backboard. And I mean, it was old school, but it was enough for us to run around a little bit, do some layups. Um, that's where I really started was in, in the school team. Holger, um, what impact did he have on your life? He was just a huge mentor and I owe him everything because I wasn't sure at time of 15 where, where this journey in basketball would take me. and. He taught me everything. He taught me how to move, uh, to shoot, uh, and, and also helped me off the court uh, with, with stuff, with school, and just growing into the person I wanted to, to become. So, What would he have you read? Uh, every year for a birthday or Christmas, he would give me books. And I'm like, oh, great, another book, Holger. That's sweet, great, great gift. Uh, but he always tried to brighten my horizon and, and, and learn different things. And, some were novels, some were like books really hard to read for me about nature and physics. And uh, I'm just like, Holger, this is not, <laughs> like, it takes me uh, years to get through this. You know, he had me play music. Uh, he wanted me to play the saxophone. So I played the saxophone for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, just, just, you know, open your mind up to other things, not just sports. And also at the time we weren't sure if it's going to work out. So he said, you, the more well-rounded you are, it's going to help you in life better if you need a job later on or whatever. But yeah, that was his way of always trying to, to push me and, and push me to new limits. And you mentioned the saxophone. W what did he once have you dribbled to? <laughs> so we had uh, one of his friends was a, was a jazz musician, and he actually was his mentor when he started playing. And um, so the, the guy would sometimes come to practice. Uh, with his with his sax, and he would play the saxophone, and we'd had to dribble to the rhythm, and then you know mix up the dribbles and and make the basically the bouncing sound uh, as the drums. And Holger would call it dance the game. He didn't want us to play like robots, right? He never growing up, even when he was coaching our, he didn't want us to run all these plays and you just go set this pick and you set another pick. 
his philosophy was everybody's got to have fun and enjoy. It's like a, the sport is like a jazz band. There's five guys out there. Everybody has their own skill level, and they're, they're all good at something. And he always said when, when somebody did a good move, you're like, ooh, b-ball is jazz. Explain how he was trying to help you as a defender by fencing. So the, the, the long story is he, he never liked weightlifting. He thought that I was still growing as I was as a teenager and it's just going to hurt my joints. So he, we basically tried to find things in the summer for me to do to, to keep the fun, uh, get a little bigger, a little stronger, or movement, better movement. So we tried all sorts of other different sports to, to see, hey, what training can we steal from them? What's, what's good for, what could work for us? Um, so we rowed a lot. We did a rowing camp every year in the summer, for the, which is good all, all around power. We went to like a boxing training just to see how they train and warm up. And, and then fencing was, uh, was, was on, the, on the schedule once. I'm like, I don't even have a suit or anything. What, what are we doing? So the, the, this club made me a whole fencing suit and I uh, got to, to fence. And what's so good about fencing is they're, they're attacking but they're, while they attack, they also always play defense. So basically, Holger's uh, philosophy there was on defense, basically you have to be active with your hands and without giving, selling out and giving too much up and somebody can just blow by you. So it was, it was a cool experience, uh, but as we all know, I think uh, defense wasn't really my strong suit, so I don't think the fencing took my defense to another level, but it was, it was, it was fun to see.